The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. <clears throat> before anything else, before we begin our Bible study today, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, be sure you name all your sins directly to God the Father by using the principle of 1 John 1 9 so you can be filled by God the Holy Spirit and ready to learn Bible doctrine. But for you unbeliever, it is faith alone in Christ alone. And uh, <clears throat> John 3.36 says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not believe in the Son does not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Therefore, let us start now our Bible study without much ado. And uh, we have said yesterday that uh, there are two kinds of emotion, bad and good. Good is the normal one. Bad emotion is the abnormal. Of course, when we use the bad emotion, this is a problem, unlike using the good emotion. Good emotion only uses what God designed it to be used, which is to respond to the frame of reference, the mental attitude. Bad emotion, which is abnormal, reacts to our mentality, while the good emotion, the normal one, responds with truth. A believer <clears throat> whose basis to grow spiritually is his emotion is not actually going anywhere in his spiritual life. It is Bible doctrine and the feeling of the Holy Spirit that is supposed to be our basis in growing spiritually, not emotion. That's the reason why we have to study God's Word on a daily basis. A believer who uses his emotion, not Bible doctrine, becomes an enemy of the cross. He becomes a loser believer. There are believers who make their emotion their God, their priority. This is the world's modus operandi now, the world system. Now, <clears throat> a believer can either be under the power of the Holy Spirit or the old sin nature. It's a matter of choice. A true, genuinely brave Christian is one who has courage under pressure. Therefore, <clears throat> a believer has to metabolize Bible doctrine to be able to use that Bible doctrine. Remember, God's word mandates us believers to be doers of the word not only hearers of the word. Again, it's a matter of choice. Now, <clears throat> let's be reminded of the doctrine of stimuli. God has his stimulus, the cross. And a man is supposed to respond positively or negatively. And you know the result. If he responds uh, negatively, it's the lake of fire. That is the result, Revel Revelation 2015. But if he responds positively, the result is eternal life, Matthew 7, 13 to 14. And then that is the stimulus for unbelievers. But for believers, the stimulus is the word of God. And again, he has to respond positively or negatively. But if he responds negatively, the result would be adversity, demotion, failure, and cursing. 
Whereas if he responds positively, the result would be blessings, prosperity, promotion, success. So, <clears throat> a believer who has been provided by God eternal life, but who prioritizes his emotion, is perpetually in a state of fear and worry. He is a loser believer. He lives in the state of fear, worry, anxiety, insecurity. In short, he is living just like an unbeliever. You see, we have to learn how to distinguish the normal emotion and the abnormal emotion and how to avoid using the abnormal emotion. Remember, we are talking about the sins of emotion or emotional sins. Again, abnormal emotion devastates our spiritual life, while normal emotion promotes happiness, success, and capacity to appreciate God's grace provisions. But again, it's a matter of choice. What do we mean by fear, panic, ploy? But uh, first, what is ploy? Well, the answer is, it's a game, a contest. For example, when a person meets another person who both has a ability to play any game or contest, we can say these persons will play this game. Okay? Now, fear and panic are going to play to contest each other. Okay? We believers should never be engaged in this thing called fear panic ploy. Okay, let's review the seven categories of categorical problems. Number one, distraction from self and others. Because of us, uh, because of our arrogance, and because of others. So these things are mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, and overt sins. <clears throat> Number two, fear and other emotional problems like panic. Number three is rejection. Rejection by our friends, rejection by our loved ones. Number four is death or dying. Number five, timing. Number six, promises versus integrity. And number seven, holds in nature and fragmentation of trends. Now regarding fear, a coward cannot think under pressure, but a brave person can with relaxed mind. Concentration is required in studying Bible doctrine. Remember the principle, the rate of learning must exceed the rate of forgetting. Consistency in spiritual momentum. Consistency in inculcation. Consistency in metabolization and application of Bible doctrine. Consistency in concentration is critical to a believer. Don't forget <clears throat> that crises and disasters will just hit a believer instantly, okay? And when they hit us as believers, do we have the skill to handle them? That's the problem. Remember what happened to Job? <clears throat> now, did he fail when the disasters hit him? No. He even bravely said, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is what God wants a believer to experience. Now, when disasters come, what we usually feel is panic. But there are a lot of biblical passages and verses that give us regarding this. Deuteronomy 31.6 <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. 
He will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 8, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. In Isaiah 41.10, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, <clears throat> in Psalms 56.3, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Faith, we can see here, is a requirement in reverse concentrating Bible doctrine. What does God's word say? If God is with us, who can be against us? In the Exodus, the Jews saw Pharaoh or Pharaoh's soldiers. That's the problem. But Moses saw the solution to the problem. The Jews were victims of the fear panic ploy. Fear and faith are mutually exclusive. Adversity is the outside pressure of life, whereas stress is the inside pressure of life. Adversity is inevitable. Stress is optional. You see, Every believer should take the responsibility for every decision he makes. Also remember, human solution is no solution. Only divine solution is the real and genuine solution. The next point we will take up is the third categorical problem, which is rejection. Rejection by our friends, rejection by our loved ones. When you are rejected, what do you feel? Answer, you feel self-pity. Then you become depressed, right? When we are rejected, that means somebody is rejecting us. There is a rejecter and there is a rejectee, meaning discarded, set aside, excluded, eliminated. So, there is a problem in being rejected, right? One who is rejected becomes stressed and he feels jilted or dejected. This is destructive to the spiritual life. But if a believer has personal love for God, this is not a problem to him. In other words, the believer needs to have Bible doctrine metabolized in order to avoid being affected when he is rejected in life. In terms of rejection, there is a rejecter and there is a rejectee. It's either you are the rejecter or the rejectee. Whatever or wherever you are, the first thing that should be considered is the cause of that rejection. The cause is the problem. When it comes to problems, you either use God's problem-solving devices or your human problem device, solving device. But remember the principle, <clears throat> human solution is no solution. Only divine solution is the real and guaranteed solution. We have our volition to use, so it's a matter of choice. We will continue this discussion tomorrow, so be sure to be with us in our Bible study. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity of fellowshipping with you on your word. We thank you for this opportunity, this grace provision that you have uh, given us, uh, an opportunity which uh, we cannot take for granted. We thank you for our Bible study through the YouTube. 
of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry, this we ask in Christ's name. Amen.